The other cool thing about seismic waves is that we can actually use them to study the Earth's geology. We can use it to understand the activity of the Earth, the composition of the Earth, and also the structural design of the Earth. And so scientists commonly use it earthquakes because they are the ones that generate the most massive seismic waves. So whenever an earthquake happens, we actually use the seismic waves generated of the earthquakes in order to understand what's inside the earth and how it's acting. But before we talk about that, we have to review a little bit about the idea of reflection and refraction because we're going to need it to understand how we use the seismic waves to learn the layers of the earth. Remember that reflection is when, when any wave hits a medium and part of the energy that hits that medium will bounce back from the medium from the direction where it came from at an angle to the direction that it came from. Normally, of course, if you hit it that on, you would get a reflection that's right back where it came from. But if you have, if you come in at an angle, you also get to get it out of it at an angle. Now, in addition to that, some of the energy will get absorbed and some of the energy will simply go through the material. An example of that is refraction. Now, normally when a wave goes through a material of that has a certain uh, density or refraction index and goes into another material of a different refraction index or different density, it will change directions or speed. Now, if you are going straight ahead into the, into the object, you will not see a change in direction even though you will see a change in speed. But if you are going at an angle to the, ob to the object, you will see both a change in speed and a change in direction. So let's talk about the change in speed first. But first of all, understand that we, an example of reflection would be a mirror, for example. And an example of refraction would be a prism that's splitting the light in a rainbow or, for example, a pencil sitting in a glass of water that seems to be bent because the light is, is changing directions as it hits the water. So let's talk about how that actually happens. First of all, Speed, in physics, we learn about that speed is distance divided by time. Now, when it comes in terms of a wave, you calculate the speed based on the wavelength of the wave divided by the, the, the frequency of the wave. Or the distance between two crests or any two given points in the wave and the time it takes for each two, two successive points to actually hit a certain space. That's the speed of a wave. Now you see, because of the laws of conservation of energy, when the wave goes from one place to another, it will not change its energy unless, of course, some of the energy is absorbed, right? Which actually does happen, by the way, but excluding that, if all the energy is supposed to be conserved and some of the energy is not going to be absorbed, then the wave shouldn't change its total amount of energy, which is determined by the wave's frequency. And so the frequency would stay the same. In other words, you would not alter the frequency of the, wave, of the wave because it has the same amount of energy as it came in, even as it travels from one medium to the other. But if the frequency does not change and the material is becoming denser, it's going to be easier or harder, depending on the type of wave you're talking about. If you're talking about something about a light wave that does not need something to go through, it does better in vacuum, and it will slow down when it hits something like the air, even more when it hits the water, even more when it hits something like solid. But if you're talking about something that needs a medium to travel, like a sound wave or a seismic wave, the denser the material is, or in other words, the more solid it is, the faster this wave is going to propagate. Just like we talked about the P wave and the seismic waves, for example, or like the fact that S waves do it, uh, can actually go through solids but not through liquids. So denser materials carry waves that need a medium, faster than other waves. Why? Because they are actually going to increase the wavelength of the wave. In other words, it's going to be easier for the wave to, to move the material and it's going to make it bigger, the wave. Now, if you are changing the wavelength without changing the frequency, you're changing the formula here. You're increasing the top while making the, the, the middle stay the same. What does that do? That's going to make the velocity go up. So denser materials for those kinds of waves would actually speed up the object, while materials which are less dense will slow down the object and so forth. Now, when that happens, it, it, basically what you're going to get is you're going to get the wave normally turns. Because the energy must stay the same and the frequency stays the same, the only way the wave is going to cope with that added speed is to actually turn as it finds it easier to go through the material. And that turn is what we recognize as the refraction pattern. All right. Now, if you're not going at an angle, you're not going to see a change in speed and therefore you're not going to see a change in the angle. So if you go and go straight ahead into the object, you're going to change the speed. The wave is going to travel slower, but it's not necessarily going to change the refraction index, 
the refraction angle because you did not come at it at an angle. And remember that some of it always reflects or bounces off the surface unless the surface is perfectly absorptive and has an albedo of absolutely zero. Now why is that important? Because when seismic waves are generated by earthquakes, that, those seismic waves travel through the earth and hit the different layers of the earth. It will go through the, from the lithosphere to the asthenosphere and then to the mesosphere and then to the outer core and then finally to the inner core. And as the waves travel through those materials of different densities, different composition, some are so solid, some are liquid, some are harder, some are softer, some are denser than others, the waves are going to be refracting differently. And so when you suddenly see the wave suddenly change as it goes through the layers, you understand that the wave is changing because the layers are changing. And you actually see sharp changes. For example, between the crust and the mantle, you're going to see a sharp change in the speed of the wave, which makes the wave turn sharply. And we call that the Maho discontinuity after the scientist that discovered. His name was Mo Mohorovich, Andrija Mohorovich. And he actually discovered that seismic waves which went through the mantle. In other words, seismic waves that left through here or on, during an earthquake went through the mantle and arrive at the top at a different place would actually arrive faster at the, at the uh, second site than a seismic wave that basically went through the crust. And the reason for that was that the waves would, would, would be faster through the mantle than they would be through the crust because the mantle was made of denser material. And so that would also cause the waves to turn sharply according to the laws of refraction. And so he understood that the pattern of wave motion was explained by the density of the material that the mantle was made of versus the crust. And therefore you explain why the mantle is compositionally different from the crust. Because it must be made of something else since it actually refracts a different material. And we have confirmation of that to study of rocks that come through volcanoes to the surface. And we picked up those rocks from the mantle and we studied them. We realized, yes, they are made of materials which are denser than the materials which the cross is made of. And so now we have an understanding of how that works. But you need to understand that by studying the way that the seismic waves travel as they go through the earth, scientists can actually know what the, the earth is made of and what kind of material it is, is it solid, is it liquid, what's actually going on. And so seismic waves are what we use to study what the structure and composition of the earth is made of. So those videos we talked about, when we talked about the structures of the earth, that's how we know what they're made of. We also know how thick the layers are based on the reflection patterns. Because the time it will take, every, remember, some of the energy is always reflected unless the surface is absolutely has zero albedo. Which means once the waves hit those layers, some of the energy bounces back from the layers and goes towards the top. And so we know that those layers are there based on the reflection that comes off the layers. And you see that happening on this picture over here. How as the waves travel through the earth, they reflect and refract in different directions. And you can tell how deep it is, just like a sonar when you use in the ocean and you can tell, you hear the echo and you wait to see how long it took for the echo to come back. You know, wait, that's not my original earthquake. It's an echo of the earthquake that I'm hearing because this, it hit the mantle and it bounced back towards me. And so by studying both the refraction patterns and the reflection patterns of seismic waves, scientists can know what the structural composition uh, in depth of each of the layers is like. And an example of that is what Andrija Mohorovic did to figure out that the Maho, or the, that he named after himself, was the line that divided the crust from the mantle because as soon as the seismic wave hits that line, it experiences an area of higher density which makes it sh turn sharply and move faster, which allows the wave to reach a another point faster than it would if, if it went through the surface of the crust. All right. On the next video, we're going to talk about some applications that scientists do to use this to learn about the Earth. I'll see you guys then.